guys, welcome back. So today's video is going to be the requested video on makeup brushes. I'm gonna entitle this like Makeup Brush University. <laughs> I'm going to get into the nitty gritty details of synthetic versus natural hair and I'm also going to break down different types of natural hair and what they're best used for. So as you can see, I have some brushes behind me. Um, it's just easier to lay them out there than on this tiny little table I have in front of me. I'm going to search for some pictures and insert them throughout the video so you can get a better visual of what I'm referring to. So a synthetic brush is going to be a man-made fiber. If I'm not mistaken, the first company to pioneer synthetic brush fibers was DuPont with Taclon, which has now since been sold to, I believe it's a Japanese company, uh, the Taclon brand. Ever since Taclon, synthetic brushes have come a long way. There's also Taffri and Natrafil and a few others that are pretty decent. Traditional synthetic brushes made of Taclon were never very good at picking up powders. I'm going to tell you why. Natural hair bristles, just like your human hair, have a cuticle on them. And traditional synthetic brushes, since they're made of you could think of it as like a plastic, like a nylon. They are really smooth. Natural hair bristles have um, cells on the outside of them that form kind of like a shingle pattern as they've been layered and some can go up to as much as 12 layers deep. That makes them really useful for is dipping into product and scooping up and grabbing onto a lot of that. Natural hair also has natural moisture within the hairs, which attract more product to it. So for this comparison, I'm going to use the example of the Sigma F35 brush, which is made of synthetic fibers, and then the Wayne Goss O2 brush, which is made of blue squirrel hair. Right off the bat, you're gonna be able to tell a difference with how much powder product it picks up. So first I'm gonna take the Sigma F35 brush and I'm going to give it three strokes in here. See that? There you go. Now the Wayne Goss brush, I'm going to give three strokes in here as well. Do you see how much more powder this picked up? Right there. Well, each animal has a different shingle pattern, making each type of hair better for certain applications. Goat remains one of the most popular um, hair, natural hair brushes currently in use. There's also pony, squirrel, sable, badger, boar. There's a lot of different kinds. Wayne Goss's brushes are all cruelty free, meaning that they're all, all the hair is gathered humanely by brushing the animal. No animals were harmed in the creation of these brushes, as well as um, many of the other brands that I like. Here is a natural hair MAC brush. Um, this is the 134. MAC brushes are all handmade brushes, except for their brush collections. Keep that in mind. Don't ever buy a brush collection from them because those are all machined and they're not as high quality and that's typically why you get them as a, in a discount as a set. Don't ever buy those brushes. They're not the same. But when a large manufacturer like MAC, which is actually owned by Estee Lauder, when they are putting brushes out, quality control and having a uniformed product is going to be very important to them, obviously. you know, Just like no two humans are the same, no two animals' coats are going to be exactly the same. And if you see two brushes sitting on the shelf and this one might have maybe some white little pieces in it while the other one doesn't, that could be somewhat off-putting to consumers. So a company that mass produces brushes and they do use natural hair like Estee Lauder, AKA Mac, you are going to get natural hair bristles that have been dyed. And that is because they want uniformity throughout all of their brushes. To the best of my knowledge, um, Wayne only has one brush that he's ever colored or dyed and that is the holiday brush. The white brush is actually the natural color of it, but he did make one in black as well to, for people that wanted like a uniformed color set. Just like with human hair, when you dye your hair, you are going to subject it to being more dry and just compromising the cuticle of your hair. You'll also see that sometimes when you're washing a natural hair brush that you can see some of the dye bleed out of it. I personally don't care for colored haired brushes. I don't mind them looking all pretty and uniformed. I just like the performance of the virgin untouched hair. Typically you will see a large price 
variation between natural hair and synthetic typically natural hair being significantly more expensive than synthetic. Um, I will say that the IT Cosmetic brushes make my favorite synthetic face brushes, and these are quite pricey, which in my opinion is a lot for a synthetic brush, but these are very soft and I do like the way these perform. Synthetic brushes are going to be amazing for cream products because since they don't hold on and absorb the product like natural hair bristles do, they are going to place the product and blend it in. If you used a natural hair brush on your face for foundation, it can lead it to be streaky and you could have to work with the brush a little more to make sure that it's an even application. The only natural hair brushes I like for base or foundation would be something like a dual fiber brush, which is going to be made up of synthetic and natural natural hair and that is because these top bristles make sure that it is leaving it streak free and the natural hair is making sure they pick up the product. So something like my MAC 187, they have the MAC 130. This is the exception to the rule for me but typically I just use this brush. I like to use it to blend out everything that's already on my face. Now for comparison, um, here is the Makeup Forever number 134 large fan brush and here is the Wayne Goss number 15 brush. First off, you can notice a difference in the softness of these brushes. This brush is cut um, wavy so it helps dig in and kind of grab onto that product a little more than a brush that was completely straight because if you think about it it kind of has some slip to it right? And obviously a brush like this is going to be used for powder and not creams. Now this brush when I dip this into highlights, this picks up the perfect amount of product. Not too much, not too little, just right. I have not been able to stop using this for highlighting since I got it, and it is just so soft. I can highlight the bridge of my nose, my cupid's bow, just anywhere, but for all up in this area, there is no brush that I've ever used that come close to this. This is my first natural hair fan brush. That's what makes this so different to me. Um, for years, I've always used different types of fan brushes, but I've never used a natural hair, and this is really outstanding. This brush has like perfect give to it. Whereas, I mean, this is a longer hair, so it's not exactly a fair comparison, but these bristles tend to be a little more stiff, and these are really soft. This um, Wayne Goss number two brush is my new favorite for setting underneath my eyes. I will never use a different brush, I don't think. This Wayne Goss brush number 15 is the only brush I think I will use for highlighting, except I have run into products where um, they're a little more like hard and dense and I don't wanna take this brush and jam it in there and swirl it around because I love these brushes and I think they should be taken care of. So for something like that, I might need to take my synthetic brush and just really scratch it over the top if it's like a really difficult product like that. Now for blush brushes. Okay, I got this Wayne Goss brush in number 14 and this was my ride or die favorite blush brush. This is the MAC 129 short handle brush. This one is super soft. Well, this one can is can be soft, but it's a little scratchy. But what I loved this for was the amount of product it picked up and how easy it was to blend out. I picked the short handle brush because I love to hold it in my hand and kind of flick it. This does have a longer handle, but I find it picks up just the right amount of blush and just on the tip there, you see it when it's like a tapered point. And so when I put it on my face, if you can see this, all the other little bristles around it do all its job to pick up the extra and disperse it on my face. I love this brush. I am going to be getting a backup of this because the times that I do bake, I'm going to want to use this just to lightly sweep off that powder. It's so soft. It feels so nice. But I don't want to mix my blush and that because I don't want pink underneath my eyes, obviously. Now, let's get into two more of the Wayne Goss brushes in number 19 and 04. These two brushes, to me, are very similar. This dark hair one is part of what was in his first collection, and this is a brush, that, the number 19, that he came out with later. The number 4 is a lot more pointed, and this number 19 is a lot more rounded, so it's not as dramatic of a point if you could see these two. I find them very similar. The 19 is a little stiffer to me, um, but I love both of these brushes for getting in my crease there and really blending things out. Again, they're not scratchy and they're really soft. 
what I feel like I'm missing in his collections is something like my MAC 217 brush. Now this is a goat haired brush and this is my all time favorite brush for doing transition colors and really getting in there with a stiffness to blend out that crease. Because I have hooded eyes, I need a little more concentration of color, uh, controlled color, that is, when I'm trying to bring it up over my crease so you can be able to see my eyeshadow colors. And I haven't found a brush yet. Um, there's a Hakuhodo, um, I think it's like the J, I forgot the exact number, that is very similar to this. I will show you guys in a later video. Um, I'm really in the process of swapping out all of my synthetic brushes that I can for natural hair eye brushes anyway and face powder brushes. If you were getting um, the eye set, this black one comes in the eye set and I bought this one individually. So you don't need both. If you were gonna get the eye brush set, I would just get obviously the one that it comes with. But if you're just picking up brushes here or there, I would prefer the one that is a little more rounded to get higher up in my crease. So if I was buying them individually, I would have bought the 19. We'll say the black is slightly more soft than this one, um, but they're very similar. Now with MAC, since these are mass produced brushes, you're not going to get the same quality as a handmade Japanese brush like the Wayne Goss brushes. This brush, while I really like it, is extremely scratchy. Okay, let's get into some pencil brushes. So my MAC 219 is made of goat, I'm 99% sure. Um, and this was always my favorite pencil brush because again, it picked up a good amount of product when I was trying to blend it in on my lower lash line. Now the Sigma E30 is made up of synthetic hair. Now you can see I use this for cream products. Sorry, it's dirty, I did just use it yesterday. Um, so I will use this if I'm packing on a cream as a base in certain areas and I want a very controlled use of this. I do not like this at all for blending out underneath my eye again because it's synthetic and it does not do the same job as the MAC 219 whatsoever in my mind. Here are my two new favorite brushes. This is the Wayne Goss number 20 and this is the Shikihodo um, eyeshadow brush, the Z10. These are extraordinarily soft. The Z10 is a slightly bigger, so I like this for very detailed crease work. If I'm doing a cut crease, I will use this brush. And if I'm trying to go in and keep colors very separate, but blend them in, if that makes any sense. Like on the eye look that I had on my last video, I had orange and purple going on. And while those are complementary colors, they do not blend well. They make like a muddy gray. So I did want to keep those separate. So this brush came in handy for that. And I do love this brush. Now this Wayne Goss number 20 brush is the brush I've been using every time I'm smoking out my lower lash line. This is not scratchy at all. It is not uncomfortable. My Mac I really like, but I have to look up and this is like scratchy and kind of painful for me. And this brush is not comes to a really nice point if you can see that. Okay, here are two more natural hair bristle brushes that I will put against each other. This is the MAC 239 and this is the Wayne Goss 18 brush. Um, both of these brushes are made up of natural hair. The Wayne Goss is slightly longer and wider. You can automatically feel the difference on these. Um, when it comes to softness, but I've been using this to pick up and place eyeshadow all over my whole lid, and I love this. I don't really know that I will use this MAC 239 anymore. Two more comparisons. This is my MAC 224. Here is the Sigma E40 that is made of synthetic fibers. First of all, you can see a shape difference in these. I think you can. Maybe you need to be in person. Um, this one gets more tapered on the end and this one is more of a rounded bell on it. Um, what I like about the 224 better is again it picks up more product than the E40 which places more product down and just does a better job of blending in my opinion. I see a lot of girls that really swear by the Sigma brushes and the only time I will use a Sigma brush is if I don't have another available size in my Mac. Mac always used to make my favorite eye brushes. Not so much my face brushes, but my favorite eye brushes. But now that I have really gotten into some more of these handmade Japanese brushes, I'm going to try to replace all the Mac brushes I have with those. And here are two more brushes I put up against each other, the 252 and the Wayne Goss number 17. The number 17 is made of natural hair. 
and I don't know, I wanna say my MAC 252 is made of, it looks like pony hair, but it could be synthetic. It could be synthetic, I don't, I don't know. I, I can't see it on the website anywhere, so I'll have to look it up. But I really do like this 252 for taking um, my highlight powder up on my eyes, but since I got this Wayne Goss number 17 brush, I haven't touched this one. Um, it's a nice big paddle brush for kind of picking up that skin toned color that you're gonna use and placing it on your brow bone and it's not scratchy it's really soft and I like it it's kind of like a paddle that comes off to a taper on the tip here and these are two brushes that I have not found a dupe for on either side this is the Wayne Goss number 16 brush and when I first saw it I was like holy crap this is an eye brush it's huge um, what I do like it for is really blending any kind of stubborn colors I get up into my crease and what he says this brush is for from my understanding, is to really drag eyeshadow up on that outer V. And I really do like this brush. I didn't think I was going to at first, but I do. I have not found a natural hair brush um, like the MAC 242. Now, what this is going to be good for is for loose pigments, for something that tends to feel, when the, an eyeshadow typically feels oily it's not really oil that's in them typically it's uh, a silicone derivative and synthetic hair will pick the product up when you kind of wipe into it and it'll place it back down a natural hair brush can kind of drink some of that product in and it could make for a messy application because then when you're placing it down it's picked up a ton of the product so I still will always use a synthetic brush when placing pigment or glitter or anything like that on my eye I'm going to leave in the description box below an article that I read and I believe it was the New York Times that was showing for Chiki Hodo um, how he hand makes these brushes um, it's been an art form that was in his family for generations and um, basically just shows how they gather a quantity of the bristles and kind of take off the extra hairs and um, they're right outside I believe it's Hiroshima in Japan his family started making calligraphy brushes like centuries ago and he got into makeup brushes because of the demand really in America and uh, Asia so in the description bar below too guys, I'm going to break down different types of hair like sable and goat and squirrel and all of that. And I'm going to leave below um, what the best use is for those kind of hair. Again, based on the shingle pattern on the cuticle of their hair. Otherwise this video will be like an hour long and I will get some stupid comments. So <sighs> Dior is barking like a crazy person because there's someone moving. So I just had to bring her in here and hopefully she'll sit there and be quiet and a good girl. Okay. And now I'm going to get, sorry if this is all over the place. I'm, it's a lot of information and I'm trying to do it in a well-structured manner. Okay. Now for my personal use, I am going to replace every synthetic eye brush I have and powder brush with natural hair. Now, if this was for a kit, um, if you're doing makeup on other people professionally, I would say stick to synthetic bristles. There's a possibility that customers could have allergies to natural fibers, just like people have cat allergies and dog allergies. Um, it could happen. So just to keep yourself safe, I would do synthetic. Also, synthetic tend to be more hygienic and the reason for that is just because one of the reasons I love it so much, the fact that there's a cuticle in there and there's a different shingle pattern that pick up the product, it could also uh, be more susceptible to bacteria growth. Now, for something like a natural hair brush, I clean these. For my high-end natural hair brushes, I clean these a lot different than um, in my brush cleaning video. I, um, if it's just powder products, obviously, I just try to wipe them in a tissue paper. Actually, I really try in a napkin and because the napkin's a little more textured and that will take the product off and then I'll put them away. Now, if you're a professional makeup artist, you have to wash and disinfect your brushes after every use and natural hair brushes, just like your own hair, the more you wash it, the drier it gets, which will wear on your brushes. Also, if you have a very problematic acne prone skin, 
while the eye brushes and natural hair could be great for you, I would really avoid them for your face for powder because since these can hold on to product very well, that includes bacteria and you could replace that down on your skin. Now I have dry skin. Anybody with normal to dry skin, natural hair brushes are still gonna be amazing for you. And oily skin as well, just stick to the eyes. Don't, I wouldn't bring them down on your face because you could just possibly risk spreading that bacteria which could cause more problems for you. And for your kit, if you're spending, I mean, there are some brushes that are, you know, $250 for a natural hair brush. If you are spending money on that, you really want it to be in it for the long haul for you. Now, this is um, a method that I learned from Tara Babies. I'll link her channel below. I really love her channel as well. I feel like she is one of the people that I can always trust her reviews on products because she purchases all of her own products just like I do. And so I know that she means what she says and it's not something that she's doing out of obligation. She recommended cleaning her natural hair bristle brushes and that the nice ones not like my mac 217 i don't care i'll go clean that like i do on my mitt but i will i will not clean my wing goss brushes like that so what i did is i got the shea moisture this african black soap and i did get it in the block i don't know if she uses it in the liquid version or the block but i just got the block and what i do is i leave put this down on my sink i get the brush wet and i swirl it around in here and then I rinse it off. Now this is going, this is a natural soap. It's going to take off all of the bad ingredients of here and still kind of leave it feeling soft and nice. And then what she actually does, which is genius, I don't know why other people don't talk about this, I don't know if maybe they've tried it, is natural hair brushes, just like your own hair, will not hold the shape unless you really mold them into that. Because think about it, if I were to just get in the shower and come out, Typically, my hair my hair is not going to look like this if I just let it air dry. My hair is going to kind of be, be frazzled on the ends and kind of a mess. So what she does is she buys this um, aloe vera gel, which I'll link it below. Um, I got this off Amazon for fairly cheap. I got it in this big size, and I just pump it onto my hands after my brushes are um, all washed and rinsed, and I just mold it along the outside of my brush in the shape I want it to go, and I lay it down to dry. Now, after it is dried, they'll be kind of like, it feels like a gel, like hard casing on there, but when you start to use it like this, it just really breaks right off and then your brush is left feeling soft and it's in perfect shape. I started doing this with all my natural hair brushes, even my MAC ones after I wash them and it is definitely keeping them in way better shape. It helps kind of keep that moisture locked in there too, which is nice. Um, again, I don't wash these brushes as often as I would synthetic. Synthetic you can wash every time you use them and it's not gonna jeopardize the integrity of the bristle while natural hair you are that's an issue you could run into. While this video was mostly about the Wayne Goss brushes um, because I did just pick those up and it was requested, I can do a more in-depth video on the Shikihodo and the Hakihodo brushes um, because those are really the ones that I'm familiar with, but each brand is different and to try to jumble them all into one would be a little difficult. I hope this video has been helpful for you guys. If you guys have any specific questions, please let me know in the comment section down below and I will do my best to answer them. If you guys like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you have not already. Thank you so much for tuning in guys and I'll see you next time. Bye.